Welcome to day two of our three-day event celebrating the life and legacy of Southport's Art Newton. I'm Liz Fuller, president of the Southport Historical Society, and this is our general meeting, so I'd like to call the meeting to order. And now, uh, please stand if you are able and join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now I would like to invite Southport Historical Society board member, Mr. Donnie Joyner, to say a prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Our most wise uh, Heavenly Father, once again we'd like to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to assemble here tonight to pay tribute and honor to one of your sons, Art Newton, who is a native of Southport and who has blessed a lot of people in this community and elsewhere with his artwork, renderings, and photographs. A lifetime to memory. Lord, I ask if you would please to bless his family, bless all those in attendance, and to bless this gathering in thy name. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you, Johnny. So tonight we're here to celebrate the life and legacy of Southport's art news. Yesterday, August 31st, would have been Art's 100th birthday. We kicked off our three-day celebration by hosting a tour of the family home, Art's dream home, the Walker Pike House on Bay Street. Over 100 people toured the house and were able to see a few of Art's original paintings, family photos, and some personal mementos. We had an overwhelming response to the tour, with many more people hoping to participate in the tour than we could accommodate, which I know was disappointing. But I have good news. The Walker Pike House will be on this year's Christmas tour on December 10th, so you'll have another opportunity to see this historic home. In addition to being Art's 100th birthday, yesterday was also uh, Art Newton Day in the city of Southport. So I'd like to invite Mayor Joe Pat Hayden to come up and tell us a bit more about that and to read the official proclamation. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, and uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, it's an honor for me as mayor to be able to participate in this 100th birth anniversary of such a compelling life for Newton. Uh, when, you, when you think about Mr. Newton, he drew his compelling life, and if you know about his life, and I'll talk about Tommy Harrison's book in, in just a second, the losses that he had in his life, I think, were part of the motivation for the creativity that his artwork brought to life through his photographs and the way he captured the waterfront. He created a body of work that is a, it's like someone's life. And he's inspiring. And this book, is probably one of the more inspiring books that you'll read. I know we're prejudiced because being in Southport, we love Southport books and, and anything about Southport, uh, well, we're partial to it. But uh, if you read this book, and I'm sure many of you have, it, it takes you through so many um, aspects of his life. And, I challenge any of us to take a, a piece, a, a canvas or a piece of paper and some watercolor and produce anything that looks like this. I know I cannot, not even close. 
uh, I have to share with you on uh, page 51. This is the, uh, what I call the petition I fortunately have. And uh, we're so grateful we have it in our home and we see it every day. And um, Tommy uh, Harrelson, with, with this book, you captured a life that um, very few biographers uh, could do in his pictures, in his photographs, and the fact that they're, they're all here, but so many of them are here. And uh, I encourage every person in South Florida not only to have a copy of this book, but to read it. And, and you can look at these pictures over and over again, and you also will be inspired at, at his genius. And uh, I'm also inspired by Tommy's genius of putting all this together and the hard work that it took to do this. Um, yes, Art Noon Day, yesterday, is, it, we should have Art Noon Day every day for the next year um, and, and embrace his talent and his, the way he uh, captured life, the way he lived his life to the fullest in terms of his art. And, um, I, uh, like I say, I'm just honored to be here tonight to be able to help celebrate it. And I would like to read the proclamation. And I want to thank the Historical Society for putting this program in order for asking me um, to read it. City of Southport Proclamation on the 100th birth anniversary of Southport Artists, Art Newton. Whereas August 31st, 2022 marks the 100th birth anniversary of Southport native artist and photographer Art Newton. Whereas Art Newton from an early age was always doodling or drawing sketches in cartoons for high school classmate Ozen Sun Carrier, Art had a God-given talent. I think we can all agree with that, that it was a God-given talent. Whereas Art Newton graduated from Southport High School in 1941, attended the Central Academy of Commercial Art, served in the Coast Guard during World War II, and after the war, studied at Oxenfant School of Modern Art and the Cartoonist Illustrator School, both in New York City. Whereas Art Newton also worked in New York City at Avon Cosmetics Company Art Department and the publishing firm of Jack Gray Incorporated. Whereas Art Newton married Valley Bryant, and after they had their first child, he decided to move back to Southport in 1949, which he felt was a better place for his son to grow up. Whereas Art Newton opened a photography studio on Moore Street, Art Newton Studios, he told his wife, I don't know how we're going to make a living down there, but I'm ready to try. I'll pay anything from a house to a portrait, so maybe we can make it. Whereas Art Newton created over 600 paintings and took an almost infinite number of photographs from the iconic black and white photos of Southport, and in particular the destruction of Southport Waterfront by Hurricane Hazel, to a family portrait of the Otto Hickman family for their Christmas card in 1953. And I'm happy to say one of those uh, children are here with us tonight, my father-in-law, uh, son Hickman, uh, his wife, uh, grandson David and uh, his daughter Tish. So uh, there are still people that remember him. They were in the same room with him. Um, uh, Trudy Huffman, that wonderful picture of uh, you being uh, held by uh, Valley, uh, that black and white. I love that picture. And she's here with us tonight also. So it's just fantastic a photography. Whereas Art Newton's paintings, photography, and his compelling life story is chronicled by South Coordinated and former state legislator and former secretary of NCDOT Thomas J. Harrelson in his book, South Port's Art Newton, which includes many wonderful paintings of the South Port waterfront, the old pilot tower, and Thomas Mann Thompson home, Dan Harrelson's grocery, shrimp boats and docks, Max Cafe, and Withers Bench, the Brunswick Inn, the Walker Pike House, in which he and his family lived for a number of years, beginning in 1958. Black and white photos, commercial art, and commissioned art from Orton Plantation to downtown waterfront Wilmington. 
Whereas Art Newton's legacy lives in part through the many artists who paint our city, most notably Southport native artist Captain Robert Potter, whose family has shrimped the waters of Southport for generations and who has painted our waterfront like no one else since Art Newton. And artist Ricky Evans, who has photographed and painted scenes in Southport and has carried on the tradition of Art Newton at Ricky Evans Gallery. Whereas Art Newton Centennial Celebration sponsored by the Southport Historical Society, a three evening event, August 31st, tours of the Newton family home with his daughter, Julie Newton. September 1st, which is tonight, celebration of Art's life and work at the Southport Community Building. And Friday, September 2nd, Gallery Walk. Art Newton will be the featured artist at the Ricky Evans Gallery. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Joseph B. Hale, Mayor of the City of Southport, do hereby proclaim that August 31st, 2022, is recognized as the 100th birth anniversary of Art Newton and Art Newton Day. I encourage all residents to commemorate and participate in the remembrance of this legendary artistic treasure. Thank you. Um, I think that Art Newton's story is of interest to people for different reasons. For the Historical Society, we're grateful to Art for leaving us images of the people, the scenes, and the historical events of life in Southport in the 1950s. Other people are artists, and they're interested in the beauty and style of his work. Some people long to live more creative lives, and they're inspired by Art's courage to make a living solely based on his creativity through photography, painting, and illustration. And finally, others are impressed by Art's devotion to his family and to Southport, that he would give up a promising career in New York City so that his children could experience the same small town upbringing that he had enjoyed. One of the people most devoted to Art Newton's legacy is Southport Historical Society board member Julie Newton. Julie was the first one to envision a centennial celebration for Art Newton. Since then, she's been a driving force in pulling it together the people, the places, and the artwork to make it happen. She's demonstrated vision, creativity, and a sense of purpose. Traits she just might have inherited from her father. And now that I made her cry, <laughs> here to tell us more about her father is Art Newton's youngest child, Julie. Newton. Thank you, Liz. I told her I might need to clean it. Wow, I I didn't even imagine all this could happen. Um, it all began with a brick. When they were doing the fundraisers for buying the bricks, I decided to buy a brick in honor of Dad. And when I was thinking about the words to put on it, I realized this was going to be his 100th birthday. I said that to Liz, and off she ran with it. And I thought one day, you know, it would be good but to turn it into a three-day event. It has been amazing. And to be able to go into the home where I was born and where he died and to be able to talk about the years that we lived there was so over the top for me. So I did make notes and I'm going to try to follow them so I don't get distracted. So I will be the first to admit that I have always held my father in great esteem. I was only 10 months old when he died so I never knew him. And I imagined him the way I wanted to imagine him. And I became acquainted with him through the stories told by my family and friends, the state court pilot in the way it was, and a big box that my mom had kept of all of his pictures and books and all the things that were held dear to him. Those entertained me for hours when I was a child. I think it's kind of ironic that I, the baby of the family, who never even knew the man, has become his voice today. And I'm humbled and grateful when the terms hometown hero and man of many talents 
are used to refer to him. He was a man, after all, with human flaws, but I was never touched by human flaws. Therefore, I can see him as something more. I remember when I was in high school, the Franklin Square Art Gallery had an art exhibit, and that was the first time I had seen so many of my dad's paintings in one room. I was amazed, and there was one painting in particular that stood out to me. It was called Feeding Time. It's on page 95 of Tommy's book, let me just tell you. So I really never understood the talent that he possessed until I was working with Tommy while we worked on this book. I began to see the many paintings when, when we made the announcement that Tommy was working on a book and we called for anybody that has some paintings to bring them in. They came in from all over. And lo and behold, I got to see Feeding Time again, and it's in the book. So that, that book is such a treasure to me and to our family. So thank you from the bottom of my heart forever, Tommy, for that. And I could not be happier today celebrating what would have been his 100th birthday, knowing that the things he worked so hard for in his life have withstood the test of time and are still bringing joy to those who own his original works. <laughs> the fact that he captured a time in our time, in our town's history, that is forever gone now is monumental, in my opinion. I don't know if he knew in those days what he was really doing. I think he just loved taking pictures of what he loved, and he loved Southport, and he wanted to share it with as many people as possible. So in sharing with as many people as possible, since the book's come out, I have met people and talked to people that knew my dad, and I've heard some amazing stories. I don't have time to share them all, of course, but I did want to share a few. So this is a picture of Mary Coaster. She was a child whose family knew my family, and they would come down and visit in the summers. And she told me the story of one summer when they came to visit, and they were all on the beach. And she said, your dad came and got me off the beach and brought me up to the porch and took a million pictures. Well, she said it felt like a million pictures. And she was happy to do that, and she didn't think any more about it. The next time they came to visit, he showed her the painting. But it wasn't complete yet. She had pigtails, and so he was going to finish the pigtails. Sadly, he died before he finished the pigtails. So mom gave this to the family, and it's hung on their wall all these years, and she's been so proud of it, and she wanted to share her story. And so her story is on our Facebook page, and you can go there to hear it. And I'm so grateful she shared that. So one of the, I'll tell, each of my brothers had their own stories. My oldest brother told a story that I thought was fun. He remembered dad in the living room, and he would sometimes have three easels and different size things that he was working on with the same color palette. So he'd work on three, I said, dad, go on, he was, um, what did I call it tonight? Multitasking, no. He was just mass producing his stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then my other brother, Dana, told a story about one time there was company over and Dad was telling him about this portrait he had done of a ballerina. And in trying to describe it, he decided, oh, what the heck, let me just show you. And he just painted it real quick or sketched it and Dana was amazed at how quickly and accurately he re reproduced it there on the whim. So this is the talent that my dad had. And he was definitely born with it because, as you said, he was doodling. All the teachers said on all of his classwork there was always doodling, so he had something there. But he did go off to get formal training, but he wanted to come back home to Southport, and I, for one, am glad that he did. I've always felt like he was kind of famous growing up here. Everybody knew him. So that kind of made me feel famous. <laughs> so when I'm, I've moved away several times in, in my life, I always come back. So I came back three years ago, and I think I'm going to be here to stay this time. 
So, the last thing I wanted to say. Um, thanks to an article in the Southport Magazine, someone contacted me. I guess they, there's, it's, she had gotten two paintings from a friend who had gotten them at a yard sale and never wound up using them and thought she might like them in her beach house. Well, she liked them and they had, you know, she thought the artist was really good. So she decided to Google and do some research. So she started looking up, who is this Art Newton? Because these paintings look familiar. It looks like a place I've seen. And she found, first she found Tommy's book and she learned some from there. And then I guess she found the Southport Magazine article and reached out to someone from there and got my name and Googled me and found me and sent me a message out of the blue. And this was just a week and a half ago or so. So her message says, I have acquired two of your father's paintings and I think they need to come back home. So she drove an hour and a half last weekend to bring me two of the S paintings that I had never seen before. I had no idea what to expect, but we're gonna unveil them for you tonight. So Liz, here we go. Oh wow. <laughs> Don't get in front of me. So Tommy's book started something, and the paintings just keep showing up in strange places and strange times, and I'm very grateful for it all. So the last thing I want to say, you do all this stuff, and you learn as you go. I've learned that I've been sharing some misinformation. For years, I thought I was nine months old when Dad died. Turns out I was a whole month older. I was 10 months old. <laughs> but the other thing that I learned just last night at the tour, I've been saying for years that Dad's studio was at Cape Fear Jewelers. Because when I left after high school in 1981, Dad's studio was the last building on that set of buildings. So I just thought that was Cape Fear Jewelers. Someone informed me last night that that building was only built in the 80s, so they built it after I left. <laughs> so I came back and I was all disoriented. Turns out the blue cow was where his studio was, and they lived in the kitchen part when they moved back here and they the studio. So thank you all for coming out tonight and being a part of this wonderful celebration. And Dad, I hope you're happy that your work continues to bring joy to people and it has captured something that thanks to these paintings, we'll always have. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. That's lovely. Um, you know, in 1950, uh, when Art and his family moved back home to Southport, the population was 1,748 people. Of course, the, then they had a couple more children, so I suppose that raised the population to 1,750. But my point, of course, is that it was a very small town. We were, there were no surrounding communities. Sunny Point hadn't even been built yet, and there were only about 300 houses out on Oak Island. For the most part, people in Southport made their living on the water, by shrimping, or fishing from Menhaden, or piloting boats upriver. Or they supported those efforts by working in the shrimp houses, or the fish factories, or by building ships, or by running their own grocery stores and gas stations. They were good, hard-working people. And then, Art Newton came along, and he saw the beauty in what they were doing. He painted their shrimp trawlers, their fishing boats, and their grocery stores. He captured the scenery of Old Baldy, and the Cape Fear, and the Whittler's Bench. He photographed school photos, and prom dates, and graduation ceremonies, with as much seriousness as he photographed the aftermath of Hurricane Hazel or the passing of the battleship USS North Carolina on its way to Wilmington. 
It's because of Art Newton that we have images of the truth and the beauty of mid-century Southport, when it was still a small, hard-working fishing village so different than it is today. And for that legacy, the Southport Historical Society is grateful. We're also grateful to all the people who made this three-day centennial celebration possible. We had quite a few people share paintings and photos with us, and their names are listed in the program and on some of the paintings that, that were shared. And of course, we're, we are grateful for the volunteers who organized, did set up, uh, clean up, and a million other tasks to make this event possible. And we're especially grateful to Bridget Williamson for so generously opening her home to visitors last night. So Bridget, we have a little gift for you. Um, this is a copy of Tommy's book, which you probably already own because every person who's interested in Art Newton owns one. But this one is special because it has a lovely inscription from Tommy and from Julie as a commemoration of last night. So we hope we can enjoy it. Well, thank you. Honestly, I appreciate it so much, but I have to tell the truth, I don't feel like it's my home. I just feel like I'm lucky enough to be a steward of all the history and the beautiful house that sits there. So um, anybody's welcome to come by at any time, but of course I'm always happy to help, and I'm so glad the tour was such a success. But thank you. Okay, so we're also thankful for, to Tommy for, um, for literally writing the book on Art Newton and for enabling us to sell copies of the books. We're thankful to Ricky Evans, who creates beautiful prints of Art's paintings for us to sell so that more people can enjoy Art Newton's work and for designing and printing the poster for this event. I think it's over there. So we hope that you'll be able to join us tomorrow night for the third day of our Art Newton celebration at Ricky Evans Gallery on House Street. Art Newton will be the featured artist and Tommy Harrelson will be there to say a few words. The information, the details are in your program. It will be from 5 to 7 p.m. It's free and everyone is invited. No reservations are needed. The Associated Artists will also be celebrating Art Newton tomorrow. Art Newton was a founding member of the Associated Artists and served in several leadership positions. And that will be at Franklin Square Gallery and Tommy will be speaking at 615. So I hope that you've enjoyed our presentation tonight. We wanted to leave you plenty of time to wander around, look at the exhibits and the artwork. Um, I think, please enjoy the original art. The, the, the easels are a little bit unsteady, so give them a little bit of space, but feel free to take a look. And um, in a few minutes, Don Drabble and Ted Todorov of Up the Creek will be leading us in singing Happy Birthday to Art. And so you, there are cupcakes there. We'll take the lids off. You can grab a cupcake. You can go outside. You can listen to um, Happy Birthday. Um, you can listen to music, or you can also are welcome to look at the exhibits and to um, to look at the artwork and just enjoy. We'll be here till eight o'clock. And now, the moment that you've all been waiting for. Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? <laughs> you want to stay longer? Oh. <laughs> Very much. All right.